Hello again and welcome back to my shop. This weekend I made great progress on my Intarsia project. Along the way I shot a lot of video, so this vlog entry might be a bit longer than some of my past entries, but I think you'll enjoy everything I have to show you. With that in mind, I'm going to stop talking and get right down to the video. Please enjoy, and if you like what you see, consider liking and subscribing to my channel. After being away from the project for about a week, I reassembled it today and just kind of took a look at it to see if there were any areas that really stuck out. And I have three. Right here, see how that kind of is raised above the snow? Right here where that's raised above the snow. And this area right here above the snow. What I'm going to do is take the tree out and I'm going to try to soften those areas up to where um, they sort of flow behind the snow. And the snow looks like it's kind of in front of the tree in those three areas. Um, the other thing I want to do is on the edges of the trees, uh, I didn't do any sanding there, so I just really want to smooth those out uh, and maybe kind of round the edges over just a little bit so the tree looks like it flows back uh, into the, the background a little bit better. I'll tell you guys how I'm going about softening up and rounding over the tree. Um, the bottom part where I had some problems down here, I just used my uh, spindle sander, but for the sides, I'm using a Dremel tool. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn on my uh, shop back to collect the dust because I don't really care to breathe it. So it might be noisy for a second, but uh, I'll just kind of show you what I'm doing to clean up the sides of the tree. see what I'm doing if you take a close look at the top and how it's rounded over just kind of giving it a, uh, a curved effect um, I want it to flow back as much as possible so the tree looks like it's it's uh, you know half of a, con a cone um, and I'm just gonna set and use my Dremel tool and clean that up as best as I can and the top doesn't have to be perfect because I'm gonna take the Dremel tool and I'm going to use probably a wire wheel I'm not sure but I'm gonna I'm going to run down the face of the tree to produce a bristly effect. Um, and let me show you what that looks like here in the pattern. This is what I'll be going for. And it may be hard to see, but see how the tree kind of has the bristles? And that's what I'll be going after with the uh, wire wheel and the Dremel tool. I'm not sure how well the subtlety of the tree round and back shows up in the video, uh, but in person it is a lot better. Uh, and you can see how I'm, I'm a lot cleaner here, and I'm a lot cleaner here. Now over here what you've got is a reverse effect. Um, I, I rounded that back a little bit, but now it makes this snow stick out a little too much. So I'm going to clean this snow up and just kind of curve it back so that the two kind of meet. Shouldn't take much to fix that. But overall, the rest of it looks pretty good. So I think once I get this cleaned up, sand it the way I want so that it fits in there, um, I think it'll be time to either start burning some of the designs into like the scarf um, and the tie or texturing the tree. I'm not sure where I'll go next. I just need to kind of look at it and, and make a quick decision. It's time to put some patterns on some of the pieces. I've pulled out the snowman's tie, and this is the owl's scarf. And if you take a look at the pattern, and I'll try to get this where you can see, um, up on the owl, there, there's just it's a little darker here, so I'm just going to basically burn the area and try to burn some lines into it, just to give it a little bit of, uh, of uh, you know, a textured look. Uh, and then you take a close look at the snowman, his tie, and you can see there's a lot of lines right there. I'm going to try to burn those in. I don't know how well I'll be able to do that, uh, but I'm going to give it a quick try. I did not have a real good pattern or a piece of the pattern left for the owl scarf, so I'm just going to kind of wing that. I did have a section of pattern left for the snowman's tie, and if you take a look at that, it's kind of got some dotted lines on there where I need to burn. So I'm going to just kind of try to transfer roughly this uh, pattern to the tie with a pencil, and then I'll hit it with my wood burner. All right, with the wood burner, I was able to put a little bit of... Uh, design in the tie. Now I'm working on the scarf and you'll notice it might be kind of hard to see but the kind of darker areas I'm just burning that with the side of my burner. I'll kind of show you what I'm doing. It's nothing really exciting but I'm just taking the burner and dragging it 
uh, along the wood. It's good and hot. And just letting it sort of scorch the surface of the wood. And this is, it doesn't have to be even. A little bit of uh, unevenness actually looks kind of nice, I think. There you go. And now you can kind of see how I'm getting a little difference in color without using stain or anything. I'm just using the burner to burn that in there. Um, I kind of sketched everything on with a pencil and I used the tip of this to burn my lines where my pencil lines were and then just shading beyond that. So a little bit more of this to do and uh, move on to the next step. As I'm burning this, I just wanted to show you guys a little something. On the scarf here, the bottom piece is shorter than the scarf. So I've gone ahead and wrapped my burn marks or my scorch marks around the side so that if someone sees this when they're looking up at it uh, from the, the ground level, they'll see um, that, that the design wraps all the way around. If I stop on the top, it's not going to look right. I'll also continue the scarf marks down the back side. And on this one, just even though no one will be looking down on it, I'll go ahead and continue the scorch marks on the other side. So you need to wrap those if the wood is above the surface to where someone can see it. All right, I've been working on doing some burning. You can see where I burnt a pattern into the tie. And if you come around the side, you can see I carried that pattern on as I went down the side of the tie because a little bit of it will show. Uh, it just gives it a nice effect. So don't just stop on the top. I did the same thing up here as I scorched the uh, owl's scarf. I don't know how well you can see that, but I went all the way around. So that way, uh, if you look at it from any angle, uh, you have the uh, pattern all the way around. Really happy with the way it's turning out. Uh, I think I'm going to focus on uh, some of the eyes and the, and the snowman's nose. I've penciled in the snowman's mouth. Uh, I don't want to burn that in. I'm not exactly sure what I'll do. I may use a permanent marker and draw that in uh, either right before I put uh, my finish on it. I'm not 100% sure. I'll keep you guys posted. To make the owl's eyes, I chucked up a piece of maple and set my calipers for a quarter of an inch and turned myself a dowel. Uh, I probably will use a permanent marker or some black paint to dye the ends of them black after I round them over and then I'll glue them into the owl's head. I'm going to do the same thing for the snowman's head and for his nose I believe I'll chuck up a small piece of paduke uh, just for the natural orange color and turn a uh, pointy carrot style nose for him. What we've got here is a set of eyes for the owl and a set of eyes for the snowman. Basically, I just turned a piece of maple down using my calipers to the proper diameter and cut it off and dyed it as black as I could with a permanent marker. Once I put a little finish over it, they'll shine and they'll look really good. Uh, I'm in the process now of getting a piece of paduke. Uh, I'm going to turn a carrot nose for the snowman uh, and uh, then I'll get that glued in and I'll show you guys what that looks like. I'm getting ready to make the snowman's nose, and I had a nice piece of paduke. Paduke's a really orange wood. Um, this is a cutoff from a pin that I made a while back. So what I did is I chucked up a nice piece of maple. Uh, I flattened it off and uh, hot glued this piece of paduke to it. I'm going to bring my tailstock up, and I'm going to true this up. And then I'm going to turn it down to uh, the proper size uh, for the snowman's nose and put a, uh, put a point on it so it looks like a little bit of a carrot. So I'll... Uh, get back with you guys once I get this done. All right, I've got the eyes done for the owl. They look pretty good. And I've got the eyes and the nose done for the snowman. A uh, nice little carrot nose. Looks pretty good. Uh, next up, I need to texture the Christmas tree uh, and get the snowflakes put back in or the snowballs put back in the tree. And uh, after I texture the Christmas tree, I need to get the background cut for the overall intarsias. So I'm really happy with the way it's turning out. I'm just about done, and I've been discussing finishes with some uh, other woodworking friends of mine. And I'm yet to determine what I'm going to use for my finish, but uh, I'm getting real close to being ready for that. So I'm going to make that decision soon, and I'll let you guys know, and we'll continue on and uh, get this thing finished. It's time for me to cut the background for the intarsia out. I was able to find an eighth inch piece of Baltic birch plywood at Woodcraft. And what I've done is I've taken several of my printout patterns and I have just taped them together. I've cut the bottom off 
and uh, I have taped it to the plywood to form kind of a, a hinge so I can lift this up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use an old-fashioned method. I have got some carbon paper and I'm going to lay the carbon paper behind the pattern, trace the arc for the semicircle, and then I'll be able to raise the pattern up, move the carbon paper, and get the entire arch traced, and then I'll take it over probably to my scroll saw and uh, cut the semicircle out. And there you can see I have the semicircle traced on the uh, plywood. Now it's a time to uh, head over to the saw and cut it out. Okay, I've got the background cut out. I've laid everything out. I'm really happy. Um, I've got two things I need to correct. One is this piece of snow right here. I had trouble. You remember I had trouble in one of the earlier vlogs with my scroll saw. This bottom piece of the tree is where I had my issue. It ended up a little shorter than it should be. So I'm going to remake this piece and lengthen it about, I don't know, an eighth, a quarter of an inch so that it fits a little tighter. And this snowflake up here doesn't fit real well. So I have found another snowflake. All I need to do is round it off and get it in the hole. It fits perfectly. Uh, that'll take care of that. I need to stain the background and then uh, I'm going to decide on uh, what finish I want to use, get this thing finished, and I'll be ready to uh, give it to my wife. 